Okay. For making the chevron bracelet, you're gonna need twice as much string. So um, I've got all my string here to show you. What I like to do when they're out of the bin is I like to line up all my ends and just have all of them there and then I just pull through this way. Yeah, they might go rolling. Then like we said, I want an arm's length of string. Then you're gonna fold it. This is where I keep this pinched and come back down. And what I like to do is I just pull those strings even all the way to the bottom, they're a little tangled. And then I know exactly where to cut because I've got this looped and they're twice as long. The more knots you're making, the faster your string disappears. It gets shorter and shorter, quicker and quicker. Um, and these aren't quite lined up, so I'm going to take just another second and line them all up and kind of fix that down here. If they're not perfect, you can always trim it at the end to make it look good. But I've got these. Then you're tying your knot as if all of this is together, leaving that loop as a really easy way to make your bracelet tie onto someone's wrist or ankle or whatever it might be. Um, and I like to keep that loop a little smaller. And then you're ready to start. Now that it's cut, I've got it set up, uh, taped again, you're gonna clip it wherever it's useful. And what you need to do is set up your strings in order here and then in reverse order here. The strings on the end should match, then second should match, third, and then your fourth are gonna be the same color side by side. Here's what that looks like. Let's go ahead and start with the yellow gold. So I put this out here, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the yellow gold on this side. The top is always a little tricky when you start the chevron because it wants to do its own thing. It's got a mind of its own, but you'll get there. Second, we'll do green, why not? And so that means second over here, I need to do green. And then I'm gonna just set up blue because it naturally wants to go that way, blue. And then here are the two white in the middle. When you're making this one, I like to think of it as this is just your basic candy stripe right here on one side. But this side is like a reverse candy stripe. So I'm gonna start at this end, which is the opposite of what I would do, and work my way to the middle. Um, once you have your regular candy stripe and your reverse candy stripe, when they meet in the middle, they tie a knot together, and that makes your V. If you're like me, I've done this bracelet a thousand times, but when I go this direction, I make it tighter. And this side, because it's backwards for me, I make a little looser. So when I want the V to match up nicely, I really have to pay attention to this one being a little looser and this one being a little tighter and taking my time. Otherwise the V gets kind of skewed one way or the other because of how tight or loose it is. Um, but if it's your first one, I don't care if the V is a little bit off, but hopefully by your third one you start to get a feel for how to make that a little smoother and a little nicer looking. So I'm gonna just jump in. I'm gonna stop telling you how to tie those four knots because you already know. Uh, but I go over here on my second string. I like to start with what I already know, which is the basic candy stripe, which is your left side. Two knots, nice and tight, jump over. Now, like I said, this is usually the side I'm a little tighter with, so I'm gonna be a little looser than I usually would be. And down here. Now this is where it goes white, white, so I need to just stop after this string and wait. Yellow goes right here. It just chillaxes. Now I've gotta go over here. Some people can do the knots with their opposite hand. Um, that would mean that now my right hand holds this straight and my left hand makes the four. It is hard to do, I'm not gonna lie, unless you're one of the people that you're just as good with your right and your left hand, which you're out there. I just am not one of you. It's a little harder. So now I gotta make sure that I'm tying these a little tighter because I am not left-handed. And I wanna keep these strings straight. They try and tangle because there's just so many strings now. There's like eight down here. Pull it through. As you can tell, I'm much slower with my left hand. That's two, oh, keep them in order, green, blue, then the white. And it looks like a mess up there, I'm not worried about it yet. One, and two. Okay, 
Now is when I'm going to sort through that. Line these colors up still. And now in the middle, I can kind of push these down so I can see the very beginning of that V shape. Now whichever side you tie the last little candy stripe knot with, you want to keep it consistent throughout just to keep those strings nice and even so one doesn't end up way shorter than the other. I'm right-handed, I like to do it from the left just like before the basic candy stripe knot. So, well, now I tried to do the little pop, so I'm gonna pull this white guy back down. And then that is pretty common when you pull the middle knot. So same string on top, making that four. Now these switch sides. This one was from over here, now it's over here. And I've got the two set up for my V again. And I go again. The second row, I feel like, really helps smooth this one out when you're making the chevron. So now I've got my green. And when I get to that same color, I'm on the orange. I would be on the orange, I'm gonna wait. And I come over here. Hold it tight. Going with my left hand. Woo! Now you could go with your dominant hand, but it gets a little messy when you do it that way. Now let's see how it's going. Pretty good. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of a gap, so I'm going to push this together a little bit better and push this together a little better. And if you're worried about that, you can always check the back and see there's a little gap there because the white shows, but it shouldn't be too bad. Now, last time I tied the side from the left onto the right, so I need to do the same thing. It's tricky because they're the same color. But here's my left side. It's going to make the four. It's the color that shows. One. Now it looks like a V. Two. This color now is part of the right side. And as you keep going, that V just gets more and more noticeable and just really, really cool. Um, again, be careful of those gaps and that pop of the wrong color. Okay, we want to keep it, those stripes the same. The other thing I'd say too is like right now it looks like my white string would be next, but if I just did blue, I know that the next color is blue. Uh, and if you want to check that work, you just look at the knot, what's the first knot is blue. If you accidentally switch the colors, it's okay. It's just going to be white on one side and blue on the other, which looks a little goofy unless you do that a lot and it's intentional. Um, but I'm really looking for those V's of one color, like a blue V and a green V. Alright, let's try and keep these a little more even with my left handedness. Um, if using your non dominant hand is really hard for you, don't worry, you are not alone, just take your time. Now, I could just do this, but I said I'm taking the one from the right and tying the knot. And switching sides. Alright, now I've got these guys. And this will be the last one I'm going to show you because by then you know it all, or pretty much as much as I know. Keep it nice and tight. This string's so much skinnier, it just really changes the look of it. I kind of like it though. It's like a fat marker line compared to a skinny pencil line. And make sure these are in the right order. It doesn't matter which start I side I start from. If I started on this side with the white and then did this side, that's the same. It's totally fine as long as I don't do more than one color. If I go from, if on this side I had done blue, then gray, then yellow, then green, well that middle point would be missing and it creates a gap in the middle. And if you're making the Chevron, you do not want that gap. It is useful when you get to even crazier, fancier styles of bracelets. You can leave that gap there intentionally, but we are not there yet. Up here, and there's my last one. Like I said, I kind of have uh, a difference to my Vs, and I can always try and 
kind of stretch it out and work on that. Um, and here's what it looks like from the back. This one is a little less noticeable than the candy stripe if you go the opposite way because they really could be set up. But look for the back. This isn't really knots. These are just like long lines. We want those bumpy little knots to know the front if you take it home. All right. Uh, the chevron is harder because it's both hands, but it's also pretty easy because you know which side's front and which side's back a little bit easier. And it will take you longer and use more string because there's just more knots. I really like how thick it is too instead of that really skinny one. It's getting thicker. The more colors you add too, you can get bracelets really, really, really wide. All right, good luck, you guys.